does, does uh, Ken button it up?
Good morning, the Lord be with you. As always, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for being with us in this world, and for sending Jesus to die for our sins. And that's wonderful. That's a good news, and it's wonderful to be here to worship Him, to thank Him for that. Uh, today is the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany, and we follow 
the order of service was being printed uh, for these occasions. I hope that everybody has one. Um, and we'll have a few announcements before we begin our service. I just want to uh, remind the, all the committees and organizations that today is the due date to submit your report from the 2022 annual report. So please send them to me, and my email is there in, in, in the bulletin. Um, two more announcements. Flowers for the altar, so you are entitled now to start again bringing flowers for, for the altar. So there is a there is a list over there assigned up uh, in the back where you could put your name and if you would like to bring flowers. And finally, we have coffee today, coffee hours. So after the service, after for a while, imagine that. So you haven't been drinking coffee for, uh, for two, three years. Now you have the opportunity to drink coffee after the service. And we're going to put a sign up paper there uh, regarding volunteers who would like to, to sign up their, their names and bring coffee uh, uh, when we don't have Holy Communion. So you could bring uh, goodies if you want, but it's not that the important things. Coffee is the important things that you, we spend time together, chatting, having conversation, and drinking coffee. If you, if you want to bring goodies, it's optional. Okay, so take the bulletins with you and you will know others' activities of, at faith and at grace. Okay, so we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let us begin um, this morning uh, singing our opening hymn, Lord, help us ever to retain. rise, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the opening sentences, and this is responsibly. These are the words of your baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. 
My dear friends in Christ, as God's baptized people, therefore, let us do that. Let us repent anew that we may arise to live. But first, let me ask, what is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution. That is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Let us confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am hardly sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, is to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the android. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. We continue with the hymn of praise. Amen. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today's Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy. 30, 15 through 20. The offering of death or life. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God and command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, his statutes will, uh, and uh, his statutes and his rules. Then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you, uh, you are entering to take possession of it. But if your hearts turn away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall uh, surely perish. You shall not live a, a long in the land that you are uh, going uh, over, the, uh, the Jordan, to enter and possess. I call, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord God, uh, your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you uh, may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading today is from 1 Corinthians 3, 9, uh, 1 through 9. The church and his leaders. But I, I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as he, uh, infants in Christ. I feed you with milk, not solid food, for you uh, were not ready for it. And even now, you are not, re- uh, you are not uh, yet ready. For all, for uh, for you are still in of uh, the flesh. And, uh, for while they are jealousy and strive among you, are are you not the flesh, behaving only in a human way? For uh, uh, for one says, "I follow Paul," and another, "I follow uh, Apollos." Are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the growth. So uh, neither he who is plants nor uh, who waters is anything, but uh, but God, uh, but only God who gives the growth. Who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are uh, God's uh, fellow worker; you are God's field. God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. 
Whoever insults his brother will be liable also. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser, while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except of the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of all, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no, anything more than this come from evil. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please rise and let us confess our Christian faith as speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be serious, we continue with the sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, over the past few weeks, Jesus has been telling who he is through his preaching, the Sermon of the Mount. And there are plenty of hymns in the LSB, in our hymnal, that speak about thankfulness and praises. But if we listen closely to what today's reading says, to what Jesus says, we might not be so thankful and joyful. Jesus warns us against anger. He warns us against lust. He warns us against divorce and odds. There is hardly anything that Jesus does not warn against this morning. These are hard words for us to hear because this is where we live. So what is Jesus trying to do? Everything that we hear in the, in the readings is about law, the law of God. Well, all the readings for today should bring us to our knees. Now, that is not Jesus' purpose, but his purpose is to show us the situation that we are in. If we were to stand in front of God, before our God, on our own. And by doing this, Jesus prepares us to hear his answer to our situation, to our, our desperation. And that will be the real revelation, the real epiphany. We pray in our collect a while ago. Oh Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people that we, ju that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. We are asking God to deliver us from what we deserved. We justly suffer consequences for our sins. That does not mean that there is necessary a direct connection between your sin and your suffering. But we all suffer because of all our sin. It is happening all the time. We live in the fallen and corrupted world because of sin. And we ask that God would mercifully deliver us by his goodness, which will ultimately be to the glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We should pray this prayer often, always. So that the meditation for this morning is the three readings. We're going to start with the first reading. That was read a while ago. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 15 through 20. Our first reading for today is about life and good, death and evil. Choose life, says the Lord. This is the second giving of the law. Forty years after the children of Israel left Egypt. It is given to the new generation. Just as they are ready to cross over into the promised land. Moses recounts the history of God's deliverance. How he brought them out of Egypt. With great acts of deliverance. With his mighty outstretched arm. How he gave them his name and his covenant, his commandments. Reminding them that their rebellious parents died in the wilderness. And now, at the end of Moses' ministry, 
he, he gives them this final word. And it is pretty straightforward. Loaded with all kinds of promises from the Lord. You will live and multiply in this fantastic land that the Lord has given you. You see, there it is. It is right before you. Who could want anything but that? By the way, there is a warning. If your heart turns away, if you worship other gods and serve them, then I declare to you right now that it will be taken away from you, will be removed from them. You will surely perish. You will not live long in the land I am giving you. Friends, no one wants that. Everyone is going to obey the commands of the Lord, no? What do you think? Wrong. In no time, after they enter the land, after they conquer it, they started to fall prey to the temptation of idolatry. And very, very quickly, they fall into death and evil. They fall away from the commandments and God. And as we are gathered here this morning, we realize that, we realize that too, that this is the case for us as well. We worship other things in life. We worship the creation instead of God. God is the last one that we want to worship. It's what we are. Of course, we, we want to be faithful. We want to obey the commandments. To be the people God would have us be. It sounds good. It sounds simple. But day after day, the sinful nature in every one of us rebels. Against God chooses death, chooses evil. It happens again and again and again. We rebel against God. Who Moses says, is your life and your length of days. He is the one who gives us every good thing, including life itself. And yet again and again, we turn away. So how can we claim that we are choosing life even for ourselves when again and again we sin? We bring death upon ourselves. We bring a curse. We bring evil upon ourselves because of sin. What seems so straightforward and obvious Somehow, in our own lives, it's not happening. Let us leave uh, Deuteronomy for now. Let's go with now with the second reading, the piece of reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. And you know, this reading is all about the Corinthians. And all Christians, being still very much of the flesh, that is the sinful flesh. The church in Corinth is filled with believers, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. They have life, they have faith, right? Everything there should be okay. But no. This church is a mess in a whole pile of ways, divided up into factions, some following Paul, others following Apollos. And all the while losing sight of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom they all should be following. Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Servants called to serve the Lord's people on the Lord's behalf. They are mere human beings, sinful human beings. And what happens? Strife, jealousy, factions, divisions. Paul says, I would like to speak to you as a spiritual people, and yet look at you. You are not following Christ, but others. And if this describes the church in Corinth, does it describe our churches too? Yes. Yes, it does, unless every church that I know of. 
Do we treat our pastors the way the Lord Jesus would have us treat them? Neither elevating them nor dis dis disrespecting them, but treating them for who and what they are, servants called by the Lord to serve the Lord's people on the Lord's behalf. Do we treat congregational members the way the Lord Jesus would have us treat them? Do we in our churches ever get distracted from following our Lord and instead follow the lead of a group of individuals? Do our churches get distracted by factions and divisions? Yes, they do. Not the sin of the churches, but the sin of individuals. People like you and me, our rebellion, our jealousy, our divisions, our factionalism, our anger, our hatred, our greed, and so it goes. The indictment that the Apostle Paul brings to the Corinthians is also a warning to us too. We need to ask ourselves, are we choosing life? Are we choosing good? Are we choosing blessings? Or are we bringing upon ourselves evil and curses and death? Do we stand blameless before the Lord? If you are not on your knees yet, just think of what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say to us today in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 21 and 37. So now we move to the Gospel. There are a lot of things Jesus does not love. But he's a God of love. He loves us. But as well, there is a lot of things that Jesus does not love. And he's telling us that in our gospel reading. Jesus warns against anger. He warns against lust. He warns against divorce, murder, and oaths. There is hardly anything that Jesus does not, wa does not warn against this morning. These are hard words for us to hear because this is where we live. Jesus also mentions that there are angry words and insulting words. He says, if you have anything against your brother, fix it quickly. Settle it up before you come to the altar for Holy Communion. We should not come to the altar without first repenting of our sin and also reconciling with our brother or sisters in Christ. If not, be warned by Jesus that it will be like prison, with no release until every penny has been paid. Jesus has worked through the fifth commandment, and then he moves on to the sixth commandment, who speak about adultery, lust, and divorce. Marriage is a man and a woman together in a lifelong union. That is it. Jesus does not ask your opinion on that. He just tells you that. Do not attempt to put words in Jesus' mouth or take them out. Jesus makes sure that we understand how serious is sin. If your eye causes you to sin, better to plank it out and be done with it. Then, to let that kind of temptation overcome you. Or if your hand causes you to sin, better to cut it off than to go to hell. Jesus is not really saying that it is the eye or the hand, but he's making it very clear that any sin that is allowed to go unforgiven and repented will cost us eternally in hell. Then he tells us that believers are supposed to be honest and trustworthy, truthful and honest in their words and in their actions. This is tough. These are hard words. All of these sins are common among us. In our lives, in our homes, in our family, and even here in our church. 
Jesus is making us very aware of how badly and tragically we fall short. Friends in Christ, we see in all three readings that where we, where we stand on our own is not good. It should bring us to our knees. We pray that the punishment of our sins that we justly receive will nevertheless be averted by God's goodness. And that is exactly where the Lord Jesus is now going to take us. Because if he's not telling us the good news, the gospel, all our life, what those three readings are describing, we will be in bad shape without hope of salvation. But here, what Jesus speaks, when the Lord comes to judge, God who is righteous in himself, chooses not to use his righteousness as the standard by which we are condemned. But instead, his righteousness is that by which he declares us righteous for the sake of Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice to God fulfill the requirements of the law, the requirements of God's justice, that law that we cannot accomplish. Jesus fulfilled it and nailed it on the cross. Do you get what that meant? There is no good in us, so we deserve condemnation. But that is not the final word. The final word is that you are forgiven. Jesus died for all your sins so that you go to heaven. And why would Jesus do that? Because Jesus loves you, each one of you. Not because we are good. Not because there is any merit or worth in, in, in us, but because he loves us. This is good news. So when the Lord comes to judge the world with righteousness, it is to declare upon us the verdict of not guilty. In fact, to declare us righteous before God. That is the salvation that he has made known to you and to me, right here, once again, this morning. That is the epiphany, the revelation, the revealing of who the man Jesus really is, through God, human flesh, to be our Savior, to save us. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue collecting the offering, and we sing him 921.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the salvation that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for blessing that you provide to each of us. We return a portion of what you have given us to be used in your kingdom. Amen. <coughs> Please rise, we continue with prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That Almighty God, who received the praise of seas and rivers, would keep us in the baptismal grace he has given us by water in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For maturity of faith, that our Father in heaven would bless pastors teachers, parents, and all who teach his word, and that he would give us a constant desire to hear and obey it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace, that God who condemns unrighteous anger as murderers, and who has saved us from his righteous anger by the death of his Son, would move us to repentance and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For purity of heart and mind, that the Lord who created us would deliver us from lustful thoughts and the evil of pornography, so that we may lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For in integrity, that the author of truth would preserve us from false oaths and strengthen us to acknowledge his word and do what he commands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the rulers of our nation, that the Lord who judges all peoples in righteousness and equity would endue them with wisdom, so that we are preserved from unjust division and enabled to live in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the suffering, for, for those who are going through difficult times in body and mind, we remember Susan, Dorothy, Jean, Francis, Anne and Mike, Rainer and Marianne, Mary, Ritva, Marcus and Risto, Lisette and family, Barbara, Geraldine, Marge, and Pastor Ron Moore. We pray also for the members of faith in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations and for those whom we name in our hearts and minds. That the Lord, our life, would sustain and strengthen them, and for those who mourned, that the Lord would console them with the promise of everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the families of our congregations, we remember today here at Grace, Anna, Hayden, and Karen, and Geraldine, that our Lord protect them, and they live their life united, united to his word, and trust in his promises of ever, everlasting life in Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the activities and plans of this congregation during this year, for health and peace to his leaders and others who work in this congregation, that our Lord provides us with wisdom and guidance in all these plans, using our times and talents, and that we all proclaim in unison to other peoples the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. God of mercy and compassion, of grace and reconciliation, pour your power upon all your children in Ukraine and Russia and other nations who are in war. Let hatred be turned into love, fear to trust, despair to hope, that violent encounters may be replaced by loving embraces, and peace and justice could be experienced by all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord As well, we pray for Turkey and Syria, who suffer a terrible earthquake on February 6, that those who are working to help those who are still trapped under collapsed buildings, that many might still be saved, and that our Lord have mercy on all those who suffer and provide comfort for those who have lost 
loved ones. And may all this strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Christian unity, that God who gives growth to the church by his means of grace would preserve his people from division and worldly wisdom and unite us in common confession of his truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord to him we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For time is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Praise be God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn.
you go out and serve the Lord, but you go out uh, after you take your coffee, okay? <laughs> I'm joking. So you are welcome to participate in the coffee, in the coffee hour. So God bless you. Take care of yourself and go out and serve the Lord. And have a great day. Oh, yeah. Yeah.